Unit 10.2 Buckling Member End Conditions In this unit, we are focused on the following outcome. Show an understanding of simple buckling phenomena. In this lesson, we will focus on being able to calculate critical buckling load for members in compression and to understand the influence of end restraint on critical buckling load. Now, in the last lesson, we discussed the impact that moment of inertia has on calculation of the critical buckling load. Also, in the last lesson, we considered only members that were pinned at both ends. However, members can have other end conditions besides just pin conditions that we're going to consider here. The following YouTube video clearly shows the impact that end condition has on critical buckling load. We'll be looking at two members, the lengths, the cross-sectional areas, and the material properties of the two members are identical, but the end condition of the two members are different. Let's take a look. In this demonstration, both of the members were loaded until they buckled. However, the member on the left could take a significantly larger load before it buckled. As you probably noticed, the difference between the two members was the end conditions. The member on the right, which could hold a lower load, was pinned at both the top and the bottom. Pinned being rotation was allowed to occur at the support. The member on the left was pinned at the top but fixed at the bottom. So no rotation was allowed to occur at the bottom of the member. And that member could take a larger load prior to buckling. To incorporate the influence of end conditions, the Euler equation for critical buckling load is modified to include this constant k. k is called the effective length factor and is used to modify the actual length of the member. Let's see how. When we have a pinned pinned member, the value for k is equal to 1, and the full member experiences buckling. When we have a fixed fixed end conditions, we see that in the buckled shape there are two inflection points, and the distance between the two inflection points is equal to 1 half the total length of the member. Thus our effective length factor is 0.5. When we have a pinned fixed end conditions, like the member on the left in the demonstration, then the effective length is 0.7. If we have a fixed free member, then the effective length is double the actual length of the member. So k is equal to 2. Here's another demonstration that shows the impact of end condition on critical load. Here are four members, each with a different end restraint condition. We can see that when the k value decreases, the load that the member can take increases. That can be seen in this equation. k is on the bottom of the equation. When k decreases, the critical load increases. When k increases, such as the fixed free condition here, the critical buckling load decreases. And we're done.